Hey guys, we are back with another Vespers and we're so glad that you can join us from wherever you are. We can't even believe that it's the third week of Vespers and we're this far into our summer already. The building directly behind you is the dining hall and that's where I spent my third summer of camp. One of my favorite places to work and an opportunity to get to see everyone's faces multiple times a day as they came in and out for meals. This week it's been great to get to see your faces during our first week of small groups. Uh, it's been a great chance to connect with you and get to go deeper with you and get to see all of your faces. So last week during Vespers, we left off right in the middle of Guess the Mess before the balloons dropped over Joel and Kathleen's heads. You guys made some great guesses. We had peanut butter milkshakes, milk, we had baked beans as a guess, chocolate milk, lovely lake water. Check out what other guesses you guys made. All right, let's jump back into our video and see what is in those balloons. What could One, it be? Two, One, three. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> is it oatmeal? <laughs> I think mine's slime. <laughs> but I think I got your oatmeal too. It's so gross. <laughs> glad you could join us tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. So why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself. So uh, like what city you're from, what you're doing right now this summer, and uh, maybe your experience at camp. Okay. So as you mentioned, I'm Cheyenne. I'm from Steubenville, Ohio. Um, I currently this summer, I'm working at my church to help them with whatever they need help with. Um, and then later on in this month, I'll be helping with a day camp with kids. 
and just like helping them come closer to God as well, since I can't be at camp this summer. Um, and my experience of camp has been amazing. I have grown so much as a young um, child, I guess. <laughs> I have grown a lot, honestly. Yeah. How many uh, summers have you been coming to camp? Well, I've been coming as a camper for eight years, and this is my second year at being a staff. That's amazing. That's crazy. Um, so what have you learned or uh, enjoyed about being a camp? Um, well, I've learned that patience is key because it's not always easy to stay calm and like, keep your like anger inside, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, also, I've learned that there are many people that love you there. Um, it's a very loving and like caring like place to be at. Um, and I just enjoy being there. Like it's just been a part of my life for so long that it doesn't feel right not going. Um, I enjoy seeing the campers come in and being scared to be there and then not wanting to leave at the end of the week. I yeah. think that's really like amazing. It shows that they've had a great time and that they love it there as well. So yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, so what were you most excited for to happen at camp this summer? Um, well, I was very excited to come back and see people that were there last summer. Mm -hmm. Also to make new friends and meet new people. Um, also to see new campers come in that I've like never seen before and like come close to God and get the connection that they need and probably want with him. Um, also, it's just like great to be there. Like I was just really excited to be there like, and just have fun and just like be there. Yeah, I hear you. It's really quiet and it's really, it's very weird to be here without other people. It's very strange. So, um, so what was an area that you had to learn to trust God last summer? Um, my patience. That's a big area that I had to learn to trust him and that he could do like what he needed to do to keep me calm and like help me with that patience. And he did do that. So that's good. He definitely did. It was really cool to watch you grow as someone that first walked onto camp as a staff member to seeing you uh, just be more open and being more more trusting and more willing to participate in things. And you were you were so much more patient with the kids as you like you could watch you grow in that. It was really cool to watch. So so what areas of life is it difficult to trust God in right now? Um, I would say now that my summer isn't going how I planned it to go and that I obviously will have to go through more things now that I'm not at camp, being with my siblings and like learning how to not just like get mad at them all the time. Um, I would say that it's a time where I need to trust that this is happening for a reason and that he will make the best out of it and that I will be something because of it. Yeah, it's not easy to trust God in the moments where we can't see what he's doing and we can't always see where he's headed. It's really hard to trust him in those moments. So I'm really proud of you that you're, that you're working to trust him even in these times when we don't know what the future holds. So, um, so what helps you to be able to trust God more? Um, talking to my pastors, it helps because they like have been through a lot because they're pastors now. So they like can tell me like the times where they didn't trust him which I think for a lot of like pastors, it's like they're calling. It's hard to trust that it's like actually made for them and that it's what they should do. So with them telling me that it's like, they had to go through this big step in their life and look where they are now. So like God can do the same for me. So that is, is there something that you feel like God is calling you to that you need to step out and trust him in? Um, as of right now, I'm not sure. I've been feeling like recently, I don't know why, but a lot of people have been asking me if I was going to become a pastor or like a core officer for like our churches and stuff. But I don't think that that's like right for me because I'm 15. Like, what are you talking about? But a lot of people have really been asking me about that or like just simply being like around kids as I'm older, like they'll ask me, well, where are you gonna be when you're older? And I'll say, I'm not sure. They'll be like, well, I think you should do something with kids. When me personally, I feel like I don't like being around kids. Like I like it, but I don't, I wouldn't want that as like a job every day. Cause I feel like it would just irritate me, but I don't know. Have you been 
dialoguing and praying with God about what you feel like he's leading you to as these people are, are talking to you? Well, honestly, no, I haven't because I haven't thought of it as much of a sign as until now that you brought it to my attention. I really think that maybe I should pray to him and ask him about it to see what I should do. Yeah, I think that's great. I think um, God can definitely use other people to speak to us and God can use other people and, and what they see in us to help us understand what God is leading us to. I'm really proud of you that you're open to the idea of people speaking into your life in that way and that you're gonna um, start talking to God more about that and seeing where he's leading. That's awesome. Um, all right, so as you're learning to trust God more, in what areas do you see him proving himself to you? Um, so I think that for me, it's become easier for me to trust him because I've trusted him with the little things so as like more little things are like building up it's becoming i can trust him with this little thing such as oh me going shopping this day i can trust that he's not gonna let anything bad happen to me then like or i can trust him with like the bigger things as like life decisions or like if something's happening i can trust him with that last question what would you say to someone that's struggling to trust god right now well i would tell them it's not easy um it's actually really hard especially when it's something big in your life, it's harder to trust that that's for you, especially if you don't think that it is. Um, I think it's really hard to trust that he's like always gonna be there and like always be able to like help you through your things in your life. So I would just say that you need to pray about it for one, like praying is just like, it helps you because you're talking to him and he'll give your response back, probably not with words, but with people or like things that you see. Um, it's definitely more than just a feeling, like trust isn't just, oh, he's there, like I can feel him, but like, it's like your beliefs too. So if you talk to more people that believe in him, then it'll be easier for you to believe and trust that he can do the good things for you. That's, you're growing. It's so cool to watch, but you are, you're growing, it's beautiful. Um, all right, well, thank you so much for spending time with me today and uh, talking a little bit about trust. Can I pray with you to close out? All right. God, I thank you so much for Cheyenne, and I thank you just for her willingness to uh, to speak about trust and to speak about the ways that she sees you uh, working in her life and uh, helping to shape who she is. And I just thank you so much for the work that you're doing, and I thank you for the ways that um, she's growing and that she's learning to trust in you more. And uh, I just pray right now that as she starts to seek you about... Um, what you're calling her to in the future, that you would just uh, help her to trust you more and more each day and help her just to, to lean on who you are and to lean on where you're leading her, Lord. I pray that you just bring um, people around her that believe in you that are just going to help encourage her more and more um, into her faith with you. I pray this in your name. Amen. <laughs>
but I won't be shaking. Yes, God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you that you have this world in your hand. We believe in faith, Lord, that you're still on your throne, and that nothing that we're facing in these days and in this season, uh, none of it is coming uh, as a surprise to you, Lord. Help us to put our trust in you. Help us to put our faith in you, God. Help us to believe and know with all that we are that you know what's best and that, and that we can trust you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Welcome back. So we're going to be looking at the Israelites' journey into the wild with the Lord. And this week we're going to zero in on the Israelites and Moses' interaction with one another. But first, let's look at our scripture. It's in Exodus chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread of the Lord that God has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, no one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Many of you know that Joel and I have three pretty incredible kids. In fact, when we first arrived on camp, our youngest, Audrey, was just three months old. She was so sweet and cute and little. In fact, most of the staff here just carried her around camp. It was pretty awesome. But now she's two and she's full of life and spunky and rambunctious. It's great, but she started a new thing. She likes to go to the top of the stairs, clap, open her arms and just dive off as she sees us coming. Now she is fully trusting that Joel or I are gonna catch her. And she has absolutely no fear that anything is gonna go wrong. She has complete faith in us. I think that's where we find ourselves in the story with the Israelites. They're trying to figure out the balance between faith and fear. The cloud by day, the fire by night, the manna in the morning, and the quail in the evening. All things that they have, which should fully have them believing and trusting in the Lord that what he's going to give them, he will provide. And there's a word between here that's not actually in the text, but I want you to listen again. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the Omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Enough. That's the unwritten word here. No one had too much and no one had too little. They had enough. See, God was providing, giving them everything to put their faith solely in him. So why did they keep the manna till the morning? Maybe they were worried that there wasn't gonna be a fresh supply in the morning. So now let's put this into perspective, okay? It's 2020, we're in a pandemic. Let's think about hand sanitizer and Clorox wipes and even toilet paper. What if God gave us just enough toilet paper on our doorstep every single day to get us through and he told us not to keep any more, not to take any extra? Would we obey? Or would we maybe put a little bit under the sink or behind a towel? Because what if it doesn't come in the morning? What would happen then? See, we all really want to trust God, but we're also really, really comfortable with our backup plans. We want to hedge the bet just in case there's no toilet paper or in the Israelites' case, the manna. I don't know, maybe you're like me and you think to yourself, 
Is there really any harm here? Is it really such a bad thing to keep a little extra? Well, maybe it's not a good versus bad. Maybe it's not an obedient versus disobedient. Maybe it's a faith versus fear. Can we really trust God for what all that he has given us? Or are we gonna to try to do it on our own? I think this is the lesson in the wilderness, that we can trust God, that we can put our faith in him instead of being captive to fear. Jesus also puts it this way. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? This is so hard for us, isn't it? I'll admit, I struggle with it too. It kind of seems unreasonable not to worry about what's gonna come next. It kind of seems a little scary to not know what's happening next. Maybe we've been burned in the past where we thought something was gonna go one way, but it went another. But as we join Jesus in the wild, he's asking us to trust him and to take him for his word, to stop operating from a place of fear, but to begin to trust him and have faith in what he will provide and to realize that it's enough. So let me ask you, what is Jesus impressing on you in these days? He's taken us out into the wild. We're alone with him. He has our attention. What is he speaking to us? What is he asking us to trust him with today? Maybe we all just need to take a look and a lesson from Audrey. Maybe we just need to open up our arms and just dive deep into a relationship with him, fully trusting him and having faith that he will take care of us, that he will provide, and that he is everything who he says he is. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful for what you have done for us. Lord, you care so greatly about us. And Lord, you provide for us. Sometimes it's not in the ways that we expect, but Lord, may we have faith in those times to trust you, to seek you, and to say, Lord, you are enough. We thank you for just loving us so deeply. We pray this in your name. Amen.